When it comes to quitting drinking, there are five stages. You might already be aware of them. Maybe you're not. But today I want to share those with you. And I also want to give you something that for me was an absolute breakthrough. It made me feel like I never wanted to drink again. And that's huge. It really helped me. I'm Simon Chappell. I'm an author, speaker and sobriety coach. I've written the books How to Quit Alcohol in 50 Days and The Sober Survival Guide. And you might already be part of my community, but if not, make sure you subscribe to this video. Click the bell icon so you get notified. There's new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. And you're also welcome to check out my members program on my website. You can try it free for 14 days. There's a powerful stop drinking course and loads of other features and benefits that will help you quit alcohol or change your relationship with drinking if that's what you want to do. So let's get back to the five stages of quitting drinking. The first stage is when you're unaware. I like to call this ignorant bliss. And most people stay in that place for their entire lives. They carry on drinking. At times, they probably worry about their alcohol use, but they just drink more to blot out those uncomfortable feelings. They don't ever really acknowledge that they've got a problem or that they need to make a change in their lives. And unfortunately, these people are the ones who are most heavily affected by depression, anxiety, mood swings, relationship breakdowns, problems at work, and of course, the physical health effects of alcohol too, and also the mental health challenges that come with it. The second stage after unawareness is when we become aware. We move out of ignorant bliss and we become aware. And normally there's something that causes us to become aware. Now this stage is particularly uncomfortable because we experience internal conflict. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. But when we become aware, we might have read an article in the newspaper about the dangers of drinking. And if you're anything like me, you might have avoided those types of articles for years and preferred to read things that tell you the benefits of alcohol, how wine is good for the heart, because we don't want to hear the information that actually this behavior is damaging and having a detrimental effect on our lives. But there comes a point when we can't avoid it. And that is normally when the internal conflict begins and we start to acknowledge that we've got an issue that we need to deal with. That's when we become aware. And the reason it is uncomfortable is that internal conflict that I mentioned. What happens is our conscious mind becomes aware and it starts to send us messages telling us that we need to look at our relationship with alcohol. Our subconscious tells us that everything's okay. We're fine if we continue with the same habit that we've had for all these years. For me, it was over 20 years. And it tries to keep us safe by telling us that we haven't got a problem. And what tends to happen is we move from side to side. For example, one week, you might side with your conscious mind and try and quit drinking. When you do that, your subconscious mind tends to get noisier. It starts to shout and scream and tell you that there's no problem with your alcohol. Your friend drinks way more than you do. So you haven't really got a problem. So you go back to drinking because it felt really uncomfortable then your conscious mind starts to get noisy, telling you that if you keep drinking, you're gonna cause yourself serious health problems and reminding you of how much it's impacting your life. And we go on flitting from side to side. I like to call it the drunken dictator. And if you've read my book, How to Quit Alcohol in 50 Days, you'll have read more about this exact theory and this process. But we're like a military dictator who keeps swapping sides in the battle. And every time we do that, we stoke the fires of war in our minds. We make the war worse. We cause it to rage by keep switching sides. There's only one way to end this conflict. And that is to create harmony between the two sides in our mind when we've moved to that place of awareness. And it's important that you understand a fundamental principle of this. There's a time normally in our 20s and 30s or maybe even in our teenage years where we drink like we don't care. We're not worried about our drinking. We are immersed in the world of ignorant bliss. It doesn't bother us. We're completely unaware that we may be moving towards problem drinking 
and it is ignorant bliss personified. But when we become aware we've got a problem, you need to know that you can never, ever go back to ignorant bliss. And I believe that that is part of what we're trying to find when we do drink. We want to shut out the uncomfortable thoughts. We want to drink like we used to drink when we were a teenager or in our early 20s. We want to feel ignorant bliss. We don't want to be aware of a problem. Now, alcohol is a drug. Of course, for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, it will numb your senses and you will get a sense that you've forgotten about these things. It has to have an upside. It's a drug. It wants us to keep coming back. So we get addicted and we keep using it. But the downside is after 60 to 90 minutes, those issues are still there. We haven't gone to ignorant bliss. We're right back in the heart of internal conflict. It doesn't get rid of it. If you can adopt a mindset that the bridge has been burned back to ignorant bliss and you can never, ever go back there, it can actually help you move forward because there can be a realisation that knowing you can't ever go back there means that you need to move forward. You need to move through this. It's the only way out. There's no going back. And when you get that clear in your mind, I think it can give you freedom because it allows you to see the light down the path that I believe you need to follow, which is to live in alcohol free. To get out of that stage where you have internal conflict, you've become aware that there's a problem. My advice is to absolutely soak your subconscious mind with all the information you can about the benefits of living alcohol free and the dangers of alcohol fully understanding what alcohol can do to your life and the impact that maybe it's had on it already we gain so much when we quit drinking understand everything that you're going to gain and recognize that you don't lose anything at all even though it feels like it at the start you don't lose anything at all. Please take that from me as gospel because it's absolutely true. The third stage is education, which is what I'm talking about. We start immersing ourselves in learning everything we can about living alcohol free, how to quit drinking in the best way, and the risks and dangers associated to continuing the habit. The more you learn, the more your subconscious mind gets in line with your conscious mind that wants you to quit. The two get in harmony with each other. Peace exists and you can move forward without too much willpower. The next stage after that is practice. We start putting into practice in the real world the things that we've learned. That might be going to social events without drinking. You might go to your first wedding without alcohol and approaching it with a sense of curiosity and complete awareness of what you will discover, what data you'll gather on your journey. And you'd go to something like that with a complete sense of curiosity and a newfound awareness. You'll be keeping your eyes open for what you'll find out, what data you can reveal about how much better things are and how much more fun you'll have. So we start putting things into practice in the real world. We start using tactics that we've learned. We start connecting with people in the alcohol-free community, making new friends, making sure we're accountable and we've got the right support. And then the final stage, as the cravings subside, we find that we're not thinking about alcohol hardly at all, very, very rarely. And even when we do, we know it's just a thought. We have 60 to 80,000 thoughts every single day. We just know that it's another thought and we can allow it to pass. That's the final stage. We master it. We feel like we are completely in control of the choice we've made to live alcohol free. We're no longer craving a drink. We no longer feel addicted and compelled to drink every single day. We're proud of who we've become. We're enjoying our alcohol free life and recognizing all the benefits. And usually we begin to inspire other people. We might start mentoring people and helping those that are earlier on the journey. And that can feel really empowering. And allow you to continue your path to growth because many people once they feel that they've mastered it and successfully quit alcohol they begin to look at other areas of their life that need some work and their journey of personal development continues and it's an amazing experience so they're the five stages of 
moving towards becoming alcohol free. Know that you can never go back to ignorant bliss. Know that you need to educate yourself. You need to immerse yourself in learning. And then you need to start practicing and make sure that you've got a community and a tribe. I recommend looking at my members program where you'll find all of the tools you need to take you through those stages, along with live coaching and amazing community of people who will take you under their wing and guide you through this journey.